there were some changes that the Harry Potter movies made to the books that I believe are, dare I say it, better than the original. You need to leave. Hear me out. It's true that in most cases, the books of any series are going to, by nature, be better than their condensed adaptations. Not every adaptation can be Lord of the Rings. With the Harry Potter reboot on the horizon, there's been a lot of talk about making a better and more faithful adaptation. But I think we don't give enough credit to the movies for doing some changes right. So in this video, I'll be sharing the top three best changes, best changes that I think the Harry Potter movies made. And in case you need a Harry Potter rewatch before the reboot comes out, but Harry Potter isn't available to stream in your country, I have a solution for you. Thanks to Alice VPN and the best VPN in the market for sponsoring today's video. What can a VPN do for a nerd like you? Can access your fave shows on Netflix while being abroad? Atlas VPN has you covered. Reading embarrassing fanfic? Atlas VPN ensures that your Google searches remain private and non-tracked. Atlas VPN will also stop ads and malware, block malicious links, ads and trackers, and notify you when someone is trying to steal your data. And you can protect unlimited devices with a single subscription. And if you've been spending too much on that Netflix subscription, Atlas VPN also helps you save while shopping online. So grab this big deal now because Atlas VPN Premium is just $183 per month. And with a 30 day money back guarantee, you can protect your privacy and get the many benefits of Atlas VPN for this ridiculously low price. You can take this deal by clicking the link in the video description below, but be quick as it is a limited time offer. In my opinion, a good change needs to do one of two things. It needs to one, either make the movie make more sense or two, it needs to serve the story or theme. All right, on to the first and what I think is the best change they made from the Harry Potter books to the movies, Snape, Snape. Severus Snape. Snape is a fascinating character in the Harry Potter books. He's someone who fights for the good side, but isn't a good person himself. This moral complexity is ingenious and original and it's important to the story. And I think it's important to show that just because a person's actions align with your cause, it doesn't necessarily mean they're good. However, 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 the issue with this narrative is that Harry names his son Severus. By doing this, the narrative implies that if Harry can forgive Snape for his sins, so should readers. But I think a more interesting conclusion for Snape's character would have been if Harry had not explicitly forgiven him. Snape not getting recognition for what he did right would allow us to ask the question ourselves, is a person like that worthy of forgiveness? Is a person like that a hero or a villain? But by validating Snape as someone worthy of being named after, it takes away the moral ambiguity the narrative sets up for him, and it, it makes him, in my opinion, a less interesting character. The line, Albus, Albus Severus, Severus you were named after two, I can't do a British accent, two headmasters of Hogwarts, one of them was a Slytherin, he was the bravest man I ever knew. That is the crux of the epilogue. The narrative is telling us that this is one of the most important ideas in the series. But this line doesn't work if Snape is not the bravest man we ever knew, but a morally grave, vindictive bully toward children whose actions were motivated by selfishness and not bravery. Whew. And if this line doesn't make sense, the entire book doesn't make sense. Now, if you wanna make this make more sense in the movie, there are two ways you can do this. The first option is to not have Harry name his son Severus, which is impossible because that's the key line of the epilogue. The second option, which is what they did in the movies, is to give Snape more of a Zuko-type redemption arc, it is to make him someone worthy of representing that theme, that not all Slytherins are bad, that people can change, that people can choose to be good. They did this by removing the worst of Snape, right? Removing the scenes where Snape insults a 14-year-old girl's appearance, where, where he makes fun of the abuse of his attention to Norman, makes Harry a more racial killed James and Baby Harry. Even the flashback scenes show a very one-sided version of James bullying Snape. Which is another conversation we can have about how the movies took James's positive qualities away to make Snape's narrative make more sense. But the, the point being, the movies transformed Snape from being a horrible bully whose actions were constantly selfish to a tragic misunderstood hero who had been secretly fighting for the good side all along. By reforming Snape, the line, one of them was a Slytherin and he was the bravest man I ever knew, not only works, but solidifies the themes of the series. It supports the idea that it doesn't matter what someone is born, but rather what they grow up to be, and that we all have light and dark inside of us. What matters is the part we choose to act on. This change makes the most important line of the epilogue actually make sense, and it supports the themes. The two tenets of good movie changes. All right, on to change two. I think this one might surprise some people. Serious Black. 
If you've seen my serious video, you'll know that while movie serious was like, we're going to be a proper family soon. I'm going to be there for you. Just like I was there for James. Book serious, it was like a little more. <laughs> You're so boring! Jesus Christ, what did I do to deserve such a boring godson? Yeah, I'm just we talking to myself again. Punk. Crazy Harry Potter, he's always Wait, hearing voices you and talking to himself. So serious. Why is this a good change? Besides the fact that we get multiple serious and hairy hugs in the movies, despite having tragically none in the books, let's look first at Sirius's character in the context of the books. Sirius is heavily featured in Goblet of Fire. In this book, he's living in a cave eating rats just so he can be near Harry to help him. He's the parental figure Harry thinks of when he needs someone to write for help and comfort when his scar hurts over the summer. He's there for Harry after everything Harry goes through in the graveyard. But when we see him in Order of the Phoenix, he's completely different. He's moody, he's irresponsible, he's understandably miserable. After being trapped in his unhappy childhood home, after 12 well, years of being Elizabeth. trapped in Azkaban. in Azkaban, this is the tragedy of book Sirius. When Harry needs Sirius the most, Sirius does not have the capacity to be there for him. Now in the movies, Sirius's death is not less sad, but it is less of a tragedy. This is because movie Sirius is a fully present parent for Harry. The difference is best demonstrated by the scene where Harry confesses to Sirius he saw Arthur's attack from the point of view of the snake. In the movies, we get this beautiful, really touching scene, one of my favorites, if, if, if not my favorite scene in all the Harry Potter movies, where Sirius takes Harry by the shoulders and he looks him in the eye and he tells him, you're not, you're not a bad a person. Bad. I can't do a British accent. You're a good person who bad things have happened to. And then we get a hug, which didn't happen in the books. And everyone out there who watched this scene on replay as a kid, wishing they had a serious black to say that to them. How you doing? You doing okay? You drink water today? Whereas in the books, Sirius just kind of slaps him on the shoulder and is like, seeing snakes? Yeah, you need to go to bed, man. In the books, Harry is losing the parent Sirius could have been. In the movies, Harry's just losing a parent. It's not less sad, but the situation certainly has less of a tragic feel to it. So if it's less tragic, why is it better? Back to the two principles of good movie changes, because one, it makes more sense in the context of the movies, and two, it serves the story and theme. It makes more sense to have this fatherly Sirius in movie five, because we never got to see parental Sirius in movie four. He wasn't really in movie four, except for his face being creepily in the fire that one time. So imagine, just, just imagine. You're watching the movies. Imagine you're watching the movies as someone who hasn't read the book. You meet Sirius briefly in movie three. The part where he's a good parent to Harry in movie four is completely cut. So the next time you see him in movie five, he's, he's just like, Dad. Harry, Harry, the risk of getting arrested, that is the fun part. That is the fun, James, James, I'm so sorry, my brother, that this son of a, is your son. I hope you are resting in peace up there and you don't have to listen to this crybaby. If this was the serious that was presented to you, you're not gonna be sad that that dude died. You're gonna be like, all right, Pete, but bro was kind of an asshole. It makes sense to present Sirius in the fatherly way he was in book four, because then if you are someone who only watches the movies, you can understand who Harry's losing and why it's such a loss. It also serves the theme, which is Harry realizing his love and his love for Sirius specifically is what makes him stronger and different from Voldemort. This theme is present in the movie even more strongly than it is in the books. And this focus on theme rather than plot is what makes Order of the Phoenix, in my opinion, the best Harry Potter movie, but that's a video for another day. The last reason I wanna hit on for why these changes make sense is because of the age of the actors that were cast. I mean, a 30 year old Snape insulting a 14 year old's teeth, that's, that's bad. There's no way to spin it, that's bad. But can you imagine if they did a book accurate Snape in the movies and 60 year old Alan Rickman was insulting a 14 year old Emma Watson's teeth? That, that looks much worse. It's the same thing for Sirius. A 48 year old Sirius encouraging Harry to be reckless and, and, and then insulting him when he doesn't comes off much worse than a Sirius in his early 30s. The, uh, the third and final change does not fit into either of the principles of good movie changes, but it's good nonetheless. This scene doesn't help the movie make more sense. It doesn't contribute any defining theme. It's just a good addition. It's the, um, the Harry and Hermione dancing scene. This was cute. This was great. This wasn't in the book, but I'm so glad it was in the movie because besides us getting Daniel Radcliffe's adorably dorky dancing, we also get a really good chance to see and understand that these are just kids caught up in a war they didn't ask for. 
we really get to see what's at stake and what they're sacrificing. And it's just, it's just a really nice moment of friendship for Harry and Hermione. Uh, giving us this moment of levity adds weight to the rest of the whole movie. I loved it. 13 out of 10. All right, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Were these good changes, bad changes? And um, I probably should have introduced myself at the beginning, but I forgot, so I'm gonna do it now. I am Michaela, Magic by Michaela, on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, and I make fandom content. If you liked that, please like and subscribe if you would like to, and have a magical rest of your day.